Welcome back again, citizens. This is episode number 11 of The Hall Truth for the week of 2 December 2012, the only show where we use an infinite probability drive to get our news. On today's show, we've got three stretch goals to talk about, the four hour live stream to catch up on, and some amazing new videos rendered by the team at CIG to get our adrenaline pumping. So let's get started with the RSI website recap. Due to the crazy one year anniversary sales, we hit three more stretch goals again this week. What a crazy, crazy couple of months it's been for crowdfunding. With the $31 million goal met, we unlocked the first of the player selected ships, the RSI Orion. The RSI Orion is a mining platform letting folks take over mining operations previously only controlled by mega corporations. At $32 million, we unlocked the Aegis Surveyor. The Aegis is an industrial quality salvage ship equipped with reinforced cargo bay, long range jump drive, and launch pods for unmanned drones. Drones? Uh, you can count me in on that one. Uh, we also promised uh, the MISC Hull C Discrete. This is a goods transporter that's extremely configurable, able to take on almost any type of transport job, and a favorite hull for criminals who like to modify the ship with advanced sensor shadow technology. Quick decompress holds and a variety of hidden compartments while still appearing like a standard cargo ship. And then at 33 million, we unlocked the Anvil Karat, featuring reinforced fuel tanks for long duration flight advanced jump drive array, and a dedicated computer core room for charting jumps. Previously a military exclusive, it's now available for civilian use as a Pathfinder spacecraft. Fully equipped to allow for self-sufficient travel, including crew, medical, and repair facilities, and a mapping-oriented sensor suite capable of always charting the way home. I know a lot of people have been looking forward to this. This is going to be a dedicated exploration ship, so that is awesome. I can't wait for that myself. Uh, the vote also ended this week in favor of the information runner for the next ship, so we've been promised the Drake Herald. It's a small armored ship designed to fill the need of safely carrying information from point A to point B. A unique feature is that it's designed to be easily cleaned in case of capture. And when we say cleaned, we mean cleaned. Uh, it includes options for data protection, redundant power subsystems, EMP shielding, and a high-powered broadcast array for data transmission. So that puts us at roughly $6 million in crowdfunding in the last two to three weeks. Uh, for one, I'm very excited about this because more money means more stuff. And I trust the team to put that money to good use and they're making some good promises here. So we'll just keep giving them the benefit of the doubt until we get the final product. During the four hour live stream anniversary stream that we had this week, we were shown a video of the new Avenger highlighting the use of PBR, which is physical based rendering. If you look at the cockpit and the glass in this video, you can really see a major difference from what we've already seen. Also, check out that hatch that leads into the back storage compartment. That is freaky, man. I am scared to climb through that thing myself. It looks like uh, you're going to need to stay fit in the Star Citizen universe to even fit in that thing. We also got a video on the website of the HUD development in the game. I got to say, this was my absolute favorite part of the four hour live stream. That radar ball, oh my gosh, it's so awesome looking. I was wondering how they were going to do radar in this game, and the 3D ball is amazing. Uh, I love the early HUD designs they've got going on. It looks really slick. It was stated that you can minimize portions of the HUD when you want and keep up what you need. Also, portions of the HUD will activate when necessary or when they become in use. I'm loving the fact that each ship's going to have its own layout to some extent, and the alien ships are going to have very alien displays. It really adds to the immersion for me and the skill behind effectively piloting a ship is going to actually take some time in the seat to learn and that's really important to me in a skill based game. So having to spend a lot of time in a ship to actually learn your displays well and how to pilot that ship well, that's very important. We also got to see a video outlining some of Camacho's music and the Capellan Orchestra recording of the Star Citizen music theme. Uh, also a lot of people thought we might get to see some AI dogfighting this week. But uh, we did not get any of that. What we ended up getting was a hangar weapons testing platform that's going to be patched into the hangar module very soon. It's basically just a big mount in the hangar that you can put different weapons on and fire them at some target dummies. They stated that they're going to be adding things to it like, like power supplies, batteries, different types of munitions and allow you to test out different setups later on. I feel like this was kind of tacked on hastily at the end of the live stream to appease the thousands of screaming fans wanting to see dogfighting or something just new and exciting. A lot of folks were really let down over the lack of new stuff to show. Even though we did actually get a lot of new stuff including new ships, uh, the, all of the HUD stuff, the PBR video, there was a lot of stuff revealed. And keep in mind the Star Citizen is keeping us up to date all the time. So. When they have a four hour stream all of a sudden, it's not like there's a lot of brand new stuff to see that we haven't already seen yet. So they're still working and we got to keep that in mind. 
We got an update on the Veterans Day Hornet skin sale that was done for charity. They raised $64,000 for Operation Supply Drop and the Honor Flight Network. So thank you to everyone that got in on that and helping to support those charities for our veterans. There was also a news update entitled A Day to Look Forward. This is another one of those in-game lore posts where we get to find out a little bit more about the goings-on in the game world. These are really interesting and you should check them out if you want to get a feel for the lore of the game. Last Thursday was Thanksgiving in the United States and Chris dropped a line on the website entitled Giving Thanks. He talks about the dream that is Star Citizen and thanking everybody for the amazing support so far. We also get to see a few work in progress explorer outfit designs. I gotta say that the female suit looks pretty nice. The male suit, eh, it looks a little generic. I like some of the other stuff they've shown so far, but the female suit's pretty cool looking. All right, moving on. There was no wingman's hangar this week due to Thanksgiving, so I'm just gonna cover the important stuff that came out of the end of the sale last week and the four hour live stream. Most of the live stream centered around the stuff in the videos that we've already talked about, but I'm going to try and highlight the other important bits of info that we got. A lot of this info, in fact most of this info, comes directly from Chris Roberts during the live stream. First off, we got a chance to purchase the Banu Merchantman ship and the Xi'an Scout ships. We did get a concept artwork of the Banu ship, and I gotta say, this is my favorite ship design so far. It's very alien looking, very cool. The concept behind the Banu ship is that the Banu aren't as technologically inclined as humans, and they're way more focused on trade and bartering. The tech's supposed to feel like stuff that's been around for a long time, and the ship is not quite as big as the Starfarer, but it's close. You can check out the preliminary stats of these two ships on the website, and as usual, everything I talk about is linked in the info section below the video to make it easier for people to go check up on what they want to see. We're going to go down this list of the rest of these tidbits in a quick fire formation, and uh, just try to get through these as quick as possible. They're kind of all over the place. So here we go. Chris Roberts stated that the campaign for Squadron 42 would be 50 to 70 hours long and said that if this was a Hollywood movie production, it would be equivalent to something like a $200 million blockbuster film. I don't know, but I might be getting more excited about Squadron 42 than I am about the Persistent Universe. Uh, there's nothing I would like more than to play another wingman for the new generation with updated everything, and that's what this is going to be. As of right now, there are 55 star systems with over 400 different environments that you can actually land on. The AI NPCs you can hire all will have different profiles like timid, aggressive, etc. This is going to affect the way they act in different situations including combat. It was also asked if NPCs can learn and the response was that the NPCs get experience and perhaps they'll also get better. AI code should learn and adapt a bit to what you're doing. We also learned that there's going to be facial reactions to things that actually happen in the game. When you're dogfighting and you got a missile on your tail, you can bet that your avatar is going to be screaming his head off or, well, I mean, you can bet your avatar is going to be calm and collected. On the topic of the dogfighting module, the team is working on issues with how multiplayer and the back end work. Chris's inclination is to do it right the first time instead of using a placeholder, and this doing it this way would delay it a little bit. Uh, ship systems and visuals like the damage system, multiple damage stats, parts of wings flying off and disabling weapons, landing gear getting blown off and affecting the ability to land the ship, as well as lighting, particle effects, engines, piping systems being damaged affecting the engines. These are all things that are being worked on. They stated there's a lot of complexity in this system. If, for example, there are currently 72 lights on the Hornet rig. They stated that most console systems are far less than 50 lights. Uh, the level of detail is unprecedented versus other flight sims. You're also going to be able to earn test credits during the dogfighting module, but those will go away before the game launches. You will be able to upgrade ships and modules during dogfighting. Uh, for example, managing heat is going to be a mini game in itself. They said they're going to start adding that stuff and add that stuff over time once the dogfighting module is released. Character creation in Squadron 42 is going to be done in a very cool way within the fiction of the game, but they aren't revealing the details on this right away. Uh, there's also going to be about six flyable ships in Squadron 42, fighters, bombers, transport, spec ops, and a cap ship, and then possibly more than that. Uh, Squadron 42 is also going to be voice acted and mostly motion captured. Apparently Squadron 42's story is inspired by things like Apocalypse Now, Gladiator, Ninth Legion, and so on. And the Persistent Universe is inspired by Firefly and Cowboy Bebop. That's awesome news. Uh, something that a lot of people find to be very important is whether we're going to have sound in space or not. Chris said yes, we will, but they may add an option for the purists to turn sound off when in external views. He also said that the sound can be justified in lore by faking sounds for better spatial and situational awareness for the pilots. I think that EVE Online does something similar to that. I'm not 100% sure, but that sounds like what their explanation is as well. 
The Cutlass is still ongoing. They're trying to fix the landing gear and hopefully this will be in the hangar by Christmas. The Asteroid hangar is possibly a guild style hangar built like a pyramid where you can build down over time as you add more space and more ships. It was also confirmed that they've been in talks with SciTech to make a dedicated Star Citizen stick with extra stuff like a dedicated analog way to look around in addition to moving. Also, different stations on ships may have different HUDs. Command ship builds will also be different. They could have big hollow spheres showing all the different ships so that you can click and direct ships. There will be no third person HUD. Third person view is only to take screenshots and look at stuff. HUDs can be affected by electronic warfare and other things. For example, a nebula could interfere with your HUD and cause you to have to navigate blind. Ship components can overheat and or wear out. Ship HUDs can be upgraded. While that is a lot of random information, uh, there's some other stuff from the four hour live stream, but most of it's stuff that we've heard many times already. So let's move on to the next thing. To top off the official information from the website this week, LTI is gone forever unless you buy one of the huge multi-ship packages that are very expensive. Uh, all the other packages were updated in the store. They're all basically the same, but they changed the names. Uh, their names are a little more intuitive now. Also, the very large packages come with some of the rare ships that you can't get in other ways. So the battle pack comes in at $1,150 and it contains the Constellation, an Aurora, and the limited edition Origin 350R Racer. The fleet pack comes in at $2,700, contains 10 ships, including the limited Super Hornet and the 350R Racer. And the war pack, weighing in at $5,000, contains six ships, including an Idris P Corvette. And then lastly, the Wing Commander package comes in at a whopping $10,000 and it contains a day with Chris Roberts. Most of these are just revamps and uh, basically still have the same stuff in them that they always had. So let's move on to other news. In other news this week, apparently they've built a one-to-one -one scale Millennium Falcon for the new Star Wars movie. Now this could still be untrue, but it's starting to look more and more like it might be true. It was reported by Yahoo News that the ship is done inside and out, and the sets are ready to move when filming starts. I mean, I would pay money to walk around in that thing and take some pictures. That is awesome. The Mandate, another sci-fi space game, hits its Kickstarter goal by getting $686,000, $186,000 more than they asked for. I personally back this game because it looks pretty amazing. From the developer's website, what makes the Mandate unique? You can interact with your crew for quests and stories, storm enemy ships, fight epic space battles, and explore a galaxy that reacts to your choices. This is a complete sci-fi RPG experience. On their site, they also have an interactive prologue, a ship designer, and a text adventure. I urge everybody to go and check this out if you haven't already. Uh, I put a link to the website down below. Keep a bookmark for later on when this game comes out. It's going to be fun. It's not Star Citizen. It's a totally different style of game, but it is sci-fi, and it is in space, and I love it. We all know that a lot of subpar games are going to be coming out around the Star Citizen hype that claim to be space sims and the like, but I really am excited that we're finally in an era of gaming where sci-fi epic space games are going to be plentiful. This is a genre of gaming that could easily be my favorite once we start seeing some quality titles come out, so I'm looking forward to it. Alright, let's jump to the r slash Star Citizen post of the week. This week's winner is Dace for his amazing helpfulness on a weekly basis. He posted a paraphrased list of all the info from the live stream. If you're in a hurry and you don't want to miss a single tidbit, check out Dace's response in this thread that I've linked below. Uh, he, he basically iterates every single little tidbit of news that's of any import that comes out of the live stream in almost an order. So thank you Dace for taking the time to do this for the r slash star citizen community and your weekly contributions. So as we wrap it up here again this week everybody, I'd like to encourage you to hit the subscribe button and leave us a comment with your thoughts on the content of the show. Let's get some conversation going over here on this extended Star Citizen community on YouTube. And uh, thank you guys for the support. And everyone remember, human see, human do. I'll see you next week on The Whole Truth. Goodbye. <laughs>